Ah, all right, it's closed. This is Lamont at large. We are in Erie, Pennsylvania at Mama Mia's Pizzeria. This is where 46 year old Brian Wells worked back in 2003 when he took a delivery two pizzas to basically a, an abandoned wooded lot and uh, ended up going on some crazy scavenger hunt with a bomb strapped to his neck. You can't make this up. This is, I, it's crazy. <laughs> and most people, most people involved in this story weren't exactly the brightest group of humans. No, these, these guys are some low yeah. IQ people. Like you've seen the movie Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's Twelve. This was certainly not one of those situations. This, this was Ocean's negative 20. <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is, yeah, this is the Walmart version of, of, the, of the Ocean's Eleven. So August 28th, 2003, 1.30 p.m., a delivery order comes in to Mamma Mia's for two pizzas. They are to be delivered to 8631 Peach Street, which is right here. W-S-E-E-TV, TV station transmitter towers on this dirt road. And the call was made from a payphone, which I am guessing is no longer there. Doubt it. So we're not even going to bother looking for that. This isn't a bright mind in society. Not saying he's dumb because I was telling you before I talked to a guy that knew him that worked at a gas station and he's had multiple conversations with Mr. Wells and I asked him I said was this guy like mentally slow in your opinion he said no not at all he said he would have good conversations about just whatever subject yeah I, I don't know but in any event this is where he went to deliver the pizzas within an hour later He's now robbing the local PNC bank with a neck bomb covered under his shirt. While he was pulled over, right before he blew himself up or was blown up, he couldn't tell the police much because there wasn't much time, but he did say that he came to this location and uh, this is where they strapped the bomb to him. Right. He actually said four black guys... Put the, another ridiculous yeah. part of this story. And uh, which we'll get to all, to all that later. But the, when the police came here after the explosion happened, the police came here and they did find the tire tracks to his Geo Metro. His shoe prints were yeah, in the dirt so here. He definitely, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt, was here. And they actually said that there was evidence of a scuffle or just the way there were, there were, there were movements in the dirt. They could tell that maybe something happened i mean that's that's what their idea was they're not sure because he seemed very cool calm and collected when he was at the bank yeah like he had been doing this all his life even though he hadn't what what would make this guy think that he, this, he can get away with it but it's just a weird story I don't yeah know. the whole story's strange but he was definitely here before he went to the pnc bank he basically shows up at the bank with a a bunch of notes with directions on where to go. He was to go to the bank. He was to rob the bank. Um, he was de to demand two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous because they don't keep that kind of money in their drawers. They typically sometimes even keep less than ten thousand dollars. And then when you get over your drawer, they come back and take the money into the safe. If you're going to try to get that kind of money out of a bank robbery, you're going to have to go behind the counter. You need a spotter outside. You need a guy in you uh, inside keeping everybody down on the ground, keeping them at gunpoint. Have you done this before? I've studied. Sounds like um, you're speaking from rock. experience. Me, me and my friend <laughs> talked about doing it when we were younger. We're, uh, very serious. Like we were even. Yeah, we didn't plan it, but we were talking about how it would go down. This was long before Lamont at large. This, this was is... this, this, and I guess what I was doing at the time. What? At the job, yes. Pizza delivery? Yes, yeah, swear to God, yeah. It all comes full circle. But we have to, first we would have to steal a car. So you wouldn't use 
the same car no. that you drive all around the same little town in. Not at all. Everybody knows you for 30 years, a pizza delivery Geo guy. Geo Metro pizza delivery guy. Yeah. Everybody knows your car. Not many Geo Metros around. Yeah. Even back then, there wasn't many around, no. especially now. No. no no disguise, walked into the bank, no disguise, nothing. No, nothing. Just, hey, uh, Brian, pizza delivery guy from Mamma Mia's, uh, give me all the money. I need $250,000. Strange. Strange. Okay. And it gets weirder than that. So this is the PNC, or what used to be the PNC Bank. Uh, it's now an urgent care or something like that. But in 2003, Brian Wells pulled up here, walked inside, to rob this bank with a huge, did you see the pictures of him with the neck, the neck bomb? Oh, it looks ridiculous. And he's wearing a shirt, a guest shirt. And some people think that they, maybe that was planned as well because he wasn't wearing it at the pizza place. So he comes in here, hands the teller a note requesting $250,000 from the vault. And that wasn't going to happen. The tellers were like, we, we can't do that. And, and he said, you have 15 minutes or something like that. Didn't happen. She said, I can give you the money out of the drawer, which was something like $8,000. And so he took that. Now, the weird thing is, at this point, you could say, well, maybe he, you know, was being forced to do this. Because that was kind of the, the idea that a lot of people had. Or, but he was, he was very relaxed at the, very at the bank. Wasn't panicking or anything no. like that. And it was just like another day of delivery pieces. Oh, by the way, let me go knock off this bank. Yeah. So relaxed, in fact, that he, on his way out, stopped and grabbed a, a dum dum lollipop. Who does that when they have a bomb strapped to their neck? But maybe he thinks that at the time it's not a bomb, it's just a fake bomb. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people think that maybe he was in on it, that it was a fake bomb, or so he believed. So he was thinking, well, I'm going to get out of this free and clear because I'm just the pizza guy. I'm the local pizza guy that yeah, everybody I knows. Think he, he was thinking in his head, yeah, I'll make some money. I'll play the victim. I've been here for, you know, all my life. I don't have a criminal record. So then, I, like I told you, it was like a, basically a scavenger hunt. He had a list of things that he had to do. And the next thing was to leave the bank and then go to the McDonald's. And that was uh, quite a far trip. It was literally... <laughs> to the building, you know, right next door. <laughs> he leaves the bank. Of course, the tellers call the police, give him the description. He had no disguise on. He was in his regular car, his Geo Metro. And I used to drive a Geo Metro uh, back it's in the days. Probably not the best getaway car, right? No, it, no dude, nobody has one anymore, really. So it's pretty a uh, rare car. Even back then, it's still a rare car. <laughs> so when they see a green little car, it, Geo Metros are tiny. They look like golf carts. They look like little go karts. Yeah. You drive around, so you, obviously people are looking at you in this tiny car, and it looks it looks funny. Right below a sign that said "drive through open 24 hours." Somewhere in the shrubbery or in the plants, there was going to be a rock with a, a note taped to it that basically said his next his next demand, and and that was to go to another rural place, much like the uh, place with the TV towers. Right. But he never got that far. He actually got back into his car and drove up this hill. So he leaves McDonald's and there's this little road that kind of goes right up this hill here. And this is where the police catch up to him. You can actually line up the, uh, the shots fairly easily. Most of the news was basically across the street in the Texas Roadhouse parking lot. That seems to be, they were there and they were kind of up here, up this hill. You can see this hill a lot in the shots. Where was his car parked at, like right here? I believe his car was right here, yeah. Because you can that, see- That cop car was somewhere over here. Yeah. It was like lying on the ground. Yeah. But his like legs crossed kind of weird, like, just like, just with his- His hands were behind him. Handcuffs. Yeah, they had him handcuffs. Okay. So he's do that. But then it starts beeping. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he seemed still pretty relaxed, even. Yeah, if, yeah the cops pull him over, they get him out of the car, they're like, what is the deal? What, did you just rob that bank? Brian, did you just rob that bank? You know, he, they pull him out, they sit him down in front of the cop car, and 
he tells them that he's like, oh, I just got, they, they attached this thing. They said, that's when he said four, four black people attached this to me. And then the thing starts beeping, making noise of something, chirping, uh -oh. beeping. Yeah, there's like a timer. It's obvious that something's going to happen. See, when that beep, however, when it starts beeping, do you think he did? It's like, what is that? He's like, someone grabbed my beeper? It's 2003. <laughs> Like some of my pages going on. Oh, they sent me a message. It's oh four oh oh, hello. <laughs> he was. I don't know how long he was here for. Not a long time. I mean, it was a very short period of time. In fact, his famous quote was saying, "I don't have a lot of time." Once it started beeping, he's like, "I don't have a lot of time." Like, and but he, he started, still wasn't panicking though. Well, once it started beeping, he certainly was. Towards the very end, he was definitely anxious and kind of trying yeah, to move his body. Pitching, yeah. And I think he realized that whether whether he knew it was real or not, you think he was trying that, to get up because he was like, I think I think you're just at that point. I think he was panicking, and I think I I don't know. I don't know what the man was thinking. You know what I mean? I think he realized that it was real at that point, and that he was going to die. And he was imagine in that being in that situation. Yeah, I know that you know he just robbed the bank, and he probably wasn't you know making the best decisions at that point in his life but when you know you're gonna die once it started ticking especially they all backed up they were oh, all behind yeah. their cars oh, yeah. and uh the, the bomb squad was two minutes too late they showed up and the, the famous shot and i'm not going to show you here but you can find it online yeah you can look for it it's it's there where it it's not that great it's not that great i mean it's 2003 i thought when i was watching it i thought his head was gonna you know, yeah. pop off. But no, he just, it just, boom, and then it he exploded just, here. Yeah, and he just, he just fell. Now, you would think that that was really the end of the story, the guy robbed the bank, but it just keeps getting crazier. There's many more people that are involved in this whole situation, this story. I mean, it, it's not what you think. Unless you've extensively read about it, it's a very, very confusing story. We're going to try to break it down. Yeah, it gets more confusing than we just showed. Yeah. Like, the best or the worst is yet to come. Yeah. So, like I said, this is where the story actually gets crazy. So, the best way to explain this is with pictures. So, three weeks after Brian is blown up, a man named Bill Rothstein contacts the Pennsylvania State Police while driving around Erie, threatening to shoot himself. And he tells the police that he's storing a dead body in a freezer in his garage. Now, enter Marjorie Deal Armstrong. So that dead body in the freezer was the boyfriend of Marjorie. And that man, Bill Rothstein, was storing that dead body in the freezer for Marjorie. Now, long story short, all the people that I'm naming they were all the conspirators involved in this. Ultimately, I think it was seven people with Marjorie being the ringleader. She really put this together. It was her idea to rob the bank so they could get money and use the money to pay a man named Ken Barnes to kill Marjorie's father so she could collect a $2 million inheritance. Now, at this point, it's widely believed that Brian Wells... Maybe at first had something to do with this, but most likely changed his mind and then was forced to go through with it. Uh, her boyfriend, the dead guy in the freezer, was James Roden. He was also involved in this, at least in the planning stages. Um, but before this whole thing was carried out, he threatened to go to the police and expose the entire plan. So Marjorie killed him in their bed. Now, Bill Rothstein was a part-time teacher. He was good with his hands. I believe he's the one who actually built that crazy neck bomb. But he died in 2004 of cancer, so not even long after this happened. Ken Barnes, the one who was going to kill Marjorie's father, was a TV repairman and a crack dealer on the side. He died in 2019. Now, there's a lot more to this story, but I'm really just skimming the surface. But February 28th, 2011, over seven years later, Marjorie Deal Armstrong was sentenced to life in prison. Justice or rapist that I turned into the FBI in his house for two years. He says you committed the murder. Rothstein is a filthy liar. And the final stop in this crazy story is the Winter Green Gorge Cemetery. 
uh, about maybe seven miles or away from where all that happened and this is where Brian Wells is buried so you have all of these people that started coming out of the woodwork yeah. and just saying oh well, no it was this person and this person and all these random names but somehow they all kind of fit together like a puzzle they found out once they searched Marjorie's house they found the letter that she had she had an issue with the bank where she had a safety deposit box and she was having a big fallout with her father and the bank supposedly let her father get at the safety deposit box he took everything so she had a big issue with that bank um, so that's probably why they targeted that bank it was all this stuff they found specific drawings that matched the directions or stuff on the neck bomb and Here you go, the, the grave of Brian Wells. The infamous pizza bomber. Yeah. Now Lamont had talked to um, someone who worked at a local gas station who kind of knew him. And he said he was a nice guy, right? Very nice guy. Had good conversations is what he said. Yeah. And I mean, he was just as shocked as anybody watching this story and anybody that knew him. This guy was not of uh, ill repute and not a bad character yeah I don't know why he did this or why even if he knew the bomb was real at the time that he strapped it on his neck he definitely knew it was real when that thing started beeping can you imagine you're like beep beep and just a lot of people actually believe that Marjorie they intended to kill him anyway they basically wanted to use oh, him yeah. as, a, as a pawn just to, to rob the bank put the money uh, wherever he was going to leave it, at, you know, down the next uh, the next stop before he got stopped by the police, he was he was supposed to go to a, a like a dead end area and do the money drop. And most people believe that. And of course, there would have been no police following him. Nobody would have called the police. Green Geo Metro. Yeah. And Marjorie, you said you told me earlier she was not a dumb woman. She was educated. No, she graduated twelfth in her class. She had a, I, a, I believe, a bachelor's degree in sociology. So, I don't know. I, it, she was, but, but she was very manipulative. She was very good at, at getting people to do things. Even in jail, she would write letters to the police saying, "Oh, I know about this case, and I know about this murder, and I, you know, trying to finagle a better situation in prison or something like she that." She really truly used her college education but for bad yeah that might play into the fact that I think four or five men in her life strangely passed away they died the, her husband fell and hit his head on the coffee table oddly and then another guy killed himself after they kind of were separated and there was a lot of death surrounding Marjorie Armstrong yeah, he didn't last long getting with her no not at all but you know, please, for all you out there, cults, pyramid scams. <laughs> <laughs> the multi-level marketing. Yeah. These type the, of things. Pizza bombs. Yeah, please. Color bombs. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's always the best advice. Hope you uh, found this video interesting. It was definitely interesting going around and seeing these locations. And, and very mind-numbing. I still yeah, can't this is get over this. Just idiots. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to Lamont at Large. I'm Please. sure you are already, but just Please. in case.